Kyle Austin, Mike Griffith here from MLive.com. On an early Sunday morning at Spartan Stadium, soon after Michigan State's uh, 31-28 win over number 7 Oregon. Definitely the biggest game of this stadium. Obviously, they can't win over Michigan State. Yeah, Kyle. How do they do it, Mike? Well, I'll tell you. You know, it's the first time that a Big Ten team has won a non-conference matchup of top 10 teams since 2006 when Ohio State beat Texas. So a big win for the league as well. And a, certainly a big one for Michigan State. First top ten game here at Spartan Stadium since 1966. How did they do it? Uh, you know, with a little bit of everything. You know, I thought last year was a complete team loss. Mm -hmm. I thought this year was a complete team win. And there were still plenty of things for Michigan State to clean up. I actually thought last year's Michigan State Oregon teams uh, played better football than we mm -hmm. saw here today. There was a lot of mistakes, but in the end, it was the Michigan State defense holding in there against a really uh, dynamic Oregon offense that started to find itself, Kyle, in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I thought Mark D'Antonio said something afterwards. He said, I felt on the sideline like Michigan State expected to win this game the entire time. And I asked him, I said, did you feel like that last year? And he, he didn't come out and say they didn't, but he said that there's a lot to take away from playing that team last year at Oregon and then being able to come back here, be familiar with them, have the home confines. He says that was worth three points at least. So I think playing the back end of this home and home here really benefited them put them over the top and you know you look at this as like a stepping stone game the last two years for as much success as they had they've lost the early game and they've had to kind of climb their way back i think this sets up the season completely different than last year. well it could you know and it is what's what's michigan state does with it right now i i don't think that a one loss michigan state team will make the playoff i don't think this win over oregon was convincing enough that if michigan state uh, were to lose to ohio state and if oregon runs the table I could see Oregon still getting the nod over Michigan State if they win the rest of their games in the Pac-12. There's a lot of things that could play out. All I'm saying was that win was not as convincing as I think it could have or should have been. I was kind of surprised, Kyle, that the defense, when they were up 31-21, or excuse me, the offense, once up 31-21, they didn't get another first down the rest of the game. And I thought Kyle, that Connor Cook missed on some of his throws. He made some great moments. But he had some throws tonight that I thought were pretty disappointing, and uh, I think this offense can just get so much better. Well, if you're going to be a killjoy, then I will point out the positives. Okay. Which is, I, I thought Michigan State's defensive line played outstanding. They did. You look at the end of the game, um, that uh, third and 18 sack they got uh, really kind of turned the game around. And to, to me, that was the clincher. Um, a couple of guys, I mean, the running backs, uh, you look at the rotation that they have between Madre London, who had the huge run early, I think really got things going. And then I think it was smart. They had LJ Scott Fresh. They brought him in in the fourth quarter, and he broke out that huge run. So I think we kind of started to see that crystallize a little bit more. I think they were going to be the two guys going forward. They looked pretty good tonight, I thought. Yeah, I thought the run game was fine, but there were times it bogged down. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know what to say about that, you know, because Oregon's defensive rankings would indicate they're not that good, and yet they play very well. This is two years in a row now where I think they played very well against Michigan State. And, yes, Michigan State had, I don't know, 190-some yards rushing, but 62 of it came on one run. Mm -hmm. I didn't see the consistent push from the offensive line that I thought we would see. I thought the pass protection was good, mm -hmm. but I didn't see Michigan State really fall into any kind of an offensive rhythm. And then troubling, and you're right, I guess I am a killjoy fan, <laughs> but you, you, know, you give up a punt return for a touchdown, mm -hmm. and this is two games in a row now where Michigan State has had coverage issues. No, this probably won't catch up to them next week against Air Force. Noon game nationally on ABC, by the way. Mm -hmm. And it probably won't get a beat against Central Michigan or mm -hmm. Indiana or even Rutgers. But who knows about October 17th at the Big House where Michigan's going to be at that point. Mm -hmm. And we certainly don't know what to expect from teams like Nebraska and Ohio State in the month of November. So uh, Michigan State's got room to get better. I guess that's the good news, Kyle. They're 2-0 and and ranked in the top five. And to me, there's very apparent areas where Michigan State can get better. If there's a stretch of a season going into that you want to you have the most room to kind of figure this stuff out. It's this next stretch of theirs, you know. Um, so I think I would expect them to be to address a lot of things and be a lot better in all those areas by the time they start playing these Michigan and these big games. Uh, but that's all the time we have for tonight. Uh, wrapping it up, uh, number five Michigan State beating number seven Oregon, 31-28. Uh, and uh, we'll catch up with you next week.